Welcome back. It's good to see you. Good to see everybody in Kansas City, all the Kansas City fans that uh, tune in to watch us. I know it's been a few weeks again. Life has been very busy, but very good. Um, we're talking about Anthony Hitchens, and I've kind of let this one marinate a little bit. I want to get past the trade deadline and see what Kansas City did. I'm talking about the, a, uh, the Anthony Hitchens restructure. And I'm going to talk about, first of all, what the Chiefs did, and then why I didn't like what the Chiefs did, and then we're going to try to end up on a fair note and talk about why possibly Kansas City did what they did. So I know that's a lot of what's and why's, and I've got numbers all over the board, I promise. I'll try to break those down and make those make some sense. There's a couple of points that even for me, my dull brain get a little complicated, so I'll try to explain those in a way that makes sense, at least from my vantage point as well. Um, Anthony Hitchens, they did a contract restructure just a few weeks ago, and so let me start with what Kansas City actually did. Here are the two contracts. This right here, all this upstairs stuff, is the original contract that Anthony Hitchens had, and he signed a couple of off-seasons ago. All of this down here, you can see where the years reset again. All of this down here is the new contract, or the restructured contract that Anthony Hitchens has. This is the base number for each year. I know we're going to get covering a lot of numbers here, but hang with me. This is the signing bonus column. This is the restructure bonus column. This is the cap hit for each season. This is the dead cap hit for each season. And that final column is how much Kansas City would save if they were to trade him or cut him at any point. So here's what Kansas City did. They restructured his contract, and that does what all restructures do. It gives you some cap relief for one season, that season. You can't have cap relief in another season based on a restructure unless the player would agree to that. It gives you cap relief for one season, that season, 2019. But the money can't just disappear. The money that you've saved in 2019 has to go somewhere, so it goes to the next few years in the contracts. Most of you who watch this kind of video, you already know that. That's kind of restructuring 101. But what the Kansas City Chiefs did specifically, they took the base salary that Hitchens was going to make this year. It was going to be $6.5 million. That was his base. It's not his cap hit. By the time you throw in his signing bonus and the workout bonus, I think, he's up to $9.3 million on the season for a cap hit. Now, what they did, they transferred most of that into a restructure bonus. That means for 2019, his base, base number turned into 805000 his cap hit becomes $5.2 million for this season. And all of that restructure bonus, which shows up right here, this is the restructure bonus, gets divided up over the seasons that are left. So $1.4 million this year, $1.4 for each of the next three seasons. So that money didn't just disappear. Basically, most of that money got sent over the next three seasons, and they got some cap relief. I think, in fact, um, $4.1 million cap relief is what they netted for this season. So that's what the Chiefs did. They, they put together a restructure, got cap relief for this season, and the result was um, that it's going to get tacked on to the next three seasons, but divided up so that no one, no one season gets hit really hard at all. The signing bonus itself, the actual guaranteed signing bonus, didn't change. It's all guaranteed for every season, $2.8 million a year. That restructure bonus is now guaranteed money. It gets added to the guaranteed money, so that's $1.4 million. Anthony Hitchens likes the deal because he now has more guaranteed money in the overall contract. He gets, I think, uh, five, six more guaranteed money than he would have had. So that's why Anthony Hitchens likes the deal. The Chiefs like the deal because it gives them cap relief in 2019. Now, very briefly, that's, that's what happened. Now, why don't I like that deal? And then we'll come back to why the Chiefs may have done the deal then. Okay, number one reason why I don't like the deal is that it makes the cap hits for the next three seasons all higher. The actual cap hit, which is the only number that really counts at the end of the day, if you're, if you're the general manager and you're trying to manage your, your team each year, that cap hit was going to be 11.3, and it grows to 12.7 in 2020. It was going to be 9.3 in 21, and now it grows to 10.7. It was going to be 11.3 in 22, and now it grows 
by that right there to 12.7. So now, be, because I created that capital relief in this season, 2019, the next three seasons, if I have Anthony Hitchens on the roster, it's going to be a bigger burden. Not by a lot. We only added $1.4 million for each season, but I wouldn't have done that. I don't, I don't want to have Anthony Hitchens cost me more money for the next three seasons in order to, to have cap relief this year. I, I would not have done that. It's not something I would have had, but that's what Kansas City now has. And, of course, they can go back and restructure again each season, but that just pushes it off onto the next two seasons and, the, and then the final season. And at some point, you kind of have to pay the piper there if that makes some sense. So for now, they now have bigger cap hits in these three seasons, and, and that's one reason why I don't like that. The second reason why I don't like that is now I can't save anything in 2020 by cutting him. And some of you have been all in favor of cutting Anthony Hitchens, and it's something I would have looked at in the off season in, in 2020 when March 2020 rolls around. It's something I would have taken a serious look at at cutting him. Now, originally in 2020, the dead cap hit for cutting him would have been 8.4, and the savings would have been 2.9. Now, I just did a video for Washington in which I recommended against cutting the player because all you were going to save was $2.9 million out of, a, out of a dead cap hit of 8.4. And I said, it's just not worth it. So, in all honesty, I could see Kansas City deciding not to cut him in that season because of that. just not enough savings there. But still now, in 2020, under the new contract, there is no savings at all. The cap hit for 2020, and I'm sorry, this is getting into complicated waters. 2020, the cap hit is now going to be $12.7 million. And the debt cap hit is also going to be $12.7 million. So now, even if I'm sick and tired of Anthony Hitchens being on the team, and I don't want him on the team, I can't even save the $2.9 million that I was going to save. Now I can't save anything. The savings is zero. There is no savings in 2020. So what Kansas City has done in, in giving them cap relief for 2019, they have locked themselves in to keeping Anthony Hitchens around for 2020. And that's just something I would not have done. Even though I know that cap savings is small, if I feel like Hitchens isn't even going to start for me next season, and there's a good chance he won't, then I'm of the opinion I might would cut him just for that $2.9 million in cap savings, even though I know I've got an $8.4 million dead hit. And now I don't have that option. In 2020, I can't cut him at all. So I am now locked into him, locked in to him for the next three seasons, all the way through 20, or for three seasons total, all the way through 2020. Now, reason number three why I don't like this deal my dead hits in 21 and 22 are all bigger, both of them. The dead cap hits in 2021 was going to be $5.6 million. It is now $8.4 million. And, and here's the trick. It's easy to think, well, all the Chiefs did is delay the decision to cut Anthony Hitchens by a season. But they did more than that. Even though the savings in 2020 would have been 2.9, and now it's 2.9 in 2021, the dead cap hit is actually bigger. So whereas in 2021 I could have saved, I, I would have only had a dead hit of $5.6 million, now I have one of $8.4 million. So I didn't just delay the decision by a year, I actually made it a, a bigger deal. It's a bigger deal now. With $8.4 million hitting my cap, it's a bigger deal now to cut him. Even though the savings are just about the same as they would have been, I now have a lot more risk involved. If I decide to cut him, I've got that dead cap hit here in 8.4. And even in the final year of the deal, I was going to have only have a dead cap hit of 2.8, and now it's 4.2. And so for those reasons, the dead cap hits are bigger in the final two seasons. My savings is gone in 2020. I can't save anything by cutting him. And the cap hits, just to have him on the team now, is bigger in all three seasons. I didn't. I don't like. I don't like what Kansas City did here. And why did they do it? They did it to get cap relief in 2019. That is the only benefit that they got. And so that brings me now to the end of it. And I know that's very confusing. That I didn't explain that very well. But that's the best I got today. 
why did Kansas City really do it? Why did they want the cap relief for 2019? And we're going to talk about a couple of reasons why they may have done that. First of all, some people have said to make room for extensions and signings. For instance, September 1st, they added LaShawn McCoy. And then a few weeks later, they came out with the contract extension for Tyreek Hill. And there was some even some speculation, well, they're making room for Chris Jones. Well, they didn't re-sign Chris Jones. And the extension for Tyreek Hill barely, if any, changed the cap number for 2019. And they already had, or the result is, now they have $23 million in cap space in 2019. So this cannot be the reason right here. You've actually, I've actually seen that in some of the magazines and the internet articles. Some people have speculated that the reason why Kansas City did this restructure with Hitchens was to make extra cap space for 2019 so they could re-sign Tyreek Hill and Chris Jones and sign Shady McCoy is just not possible. They didn't need that space. They already had more than enough space by about 10 times than they needed to sign Shady McCoy and to re-sign Tyreek Hill. It barely changed the 19 numbers at all. Or to go after Chris Jones, which I don't think was going to happen anyway. So certainly they didn't need that cap space for 2019. They just didn't need it at all. The second reason some people have said was to make room for 2020. The problem is some people have speculated, well, they were making room to re-sign uh, Patrick Mahomes in 2020. The only problem with that is, and the speculation that you find there, is we've already seen 2020 cap hit actually gets bigger. So the 2020 numbers are actually heavier now, and it's now by $1.4 million more difficult to sign Patrick Mahomes in 2020. So this could not have helped 2020 at all. In fact, it makes 2020 just a shade more complicated and a little bit more difficult. Some people have speculated they wanted to give Anthony Hitchens confidence. They wanted to give him a boost of confidence. Well, I don't think he needed that. I think all the confidence he needed was the free agent contract that we already signed him to a couple of off seasons ago. And I can't for the life of me understand why you would want to give a player confidence by guaranteeing him more money and tying yourself to him for what is really going to be four seasons now. Because if, if you already knew, if you're the Chiefs' upper management, if you already knew that you didn't want to release Anthony Hitchens for a cap savings of $2.9 million in that season, why would you want to do it down here in 2021? So basically what the Chiefs have done is they've locked themselves into Anthony Hitchens for a total of four seasons. And the benefit from that, the one benefit from that, is cap relief in 2019, which they didn't seem... To need at all. So I'm going to mark this one out as well. The one caveat I have here, the one reason why I think possibly, and I'm just throwing it out here because I don't have anything else, but I know Andy Reid's not stupid and I know Brett Veach is not stupid. They are both very smart. They get paid a whole boatload of money to do their jobs. They have a lot of pressure to do those jobs very well. They've been in the business for infinitely longer than I have, which is not at all. The one reason that I would give them room for doubt here about this restructure is that possibly they were trying to make room for a trade, not just for a small player, but for a big time defensive player. No, they didn't need any players on offense, so I don't think they were after an offensive player, but can you imagine if they were trying to kind of fish around for a linebacker like a Bobby Wagner, which there's no chance Seattle's gonna let go of Bobby Wagner, but if, if Kansas City was trying to fish around for a linebacker who could stop the run and be really dominant against the run and defend against the pass, somebody like a Bobby Wagner, then they would need that cap space for sure for 2000 and, and, and for 2019. Uh, maybe they were trying to trade for another edge rusher, like a legit top fight edge rusher. That is the only reason why I would think that this was a good move. And maybe that trade just never happened. So that's one reason I wanted to get past the trade deadline and see what Kansas City was doing there. I have no inside information on that. I've not even looked up in the news or the rumor sections about what they may or may not have been trying to do on the trade deadline. I don't have a clue. But that's the only reason that this accounting seems to make any kind of a sense. Even if, and I know someone's going to put this out there, well, Kansas City is just convinced that Anthony Hitchens is a good player and that he's going, that we're going to keep him for the entire contract anyway, or for the first four seasons, my, my question would be, why make the restructure? Why go through the process of the restructure? Even if you know 
that you want to keep him for four seasons or five seasons, why give him the extra guaranteed money? There's really no point to that unless you were planning in 2019 to try to make a trade for a big-time defensive player whose name we don't know just to make a run, a push at the Super Bowl while Patrick Mahomes is still on that rookie deal. And if that's the case, if they were trying to make that big trade, if they were trying to get that big defensive player, that edge rusher, or that middle linebacker kind of a guy who could just step in and dominate the run the way Bobby Wagner does, then I would admire them for that, for at least having tried that. But don't know anything about that. Just thought I'd throw it out there while we're kicking it around. All right. If you guys have any insight on that, feel free to let me know. I know I haven't been making as many videos lately. Give a shout out to all you guys. I appreciate you watching. Life has been good lately. We've had a couple of we've had a couple of health problems with some uh, family members. Been busy with that. Busy with kids. Busy with work and church. But that's one reason why we haven't been making as many videos lately. But we haven't forgot. I know a lot of you guys from Kansas City have hit us up for some really heavy, deeper information than even what I gave on the last video. You're asking me about the cap space for next season. I am going to come back to that at some point. I haven't forgotten you guys at all. Life's just been really good and really busy. So thank you a lot. Hope you're doing well. We'll see you next time. Bye.